Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I. This is part three in a new Let's Play series, looking at the newest uh, Strategic Command game out by Fury Software. We are playing as the Allies, or as the Entente, in this playthrough. Uh, so far in the war, it's September of 1914, and the war in the Western Front is going pretty well. Belgium has fallen, but that's kind of hard to prevent. Uh, but we're holding the Germans pretty effectively and inflicting quite a few casualties on them. In the Eastern Front, I would say the same thing is true. We have also seen an opportunity uh, in uh, Austria-Hungary Austria where we're dealing quite a bit of damage on the Russian forces, or sorry, on the Austro-Hungarian forces there with the Russians. Serbia is kind of on a knife's edge right now between being overrun, but they're holding for the moment. But I don't want to bore you with too much mumbo-jumbo, so let's just jump right into it, and we'll see how things play out as we move further into 1914 and the war gets hotter. Uh, in any event, we're going to move out of September and into October and see what the wor how the world turns as we move forward. Yet another turn. Um, given the serious situation facing us on the continent, we could use surplus men from the Royal Navy to form a Royal Navy division to help slow down the German advance. In no way will this unit be as good in combat as the regular army, but it may be able to play a role yet. Forming the Royal Navy Division will cost us 50 MPPs, and upon formation, it will be deployed in London. Was there a reason not to? Oh, God, that sucks. They got sent to Gallipoli. Sure, let's just do it. Give me them boys. Our second and third Caucasian Corps are available for transfer from the Caucasus to Brest-Litovsk from where they could be sent into action against the Germans and Austro-Hungarians. If you decide not to transfer the second and third Cauc er, Caucasian? Cauc Caucasus? Wouldn't it be? Corps? Then they will now complete their mobilization and deploy in in the Caucasus at, at Alexandria Pole and Tilfs, respectively. Sure. Give me the more. Give me the units at least until. I mean, I don't know when the uh, Ottomans are going to join, but hopefully not for a little while. Meanwhile, the Indian Expeditionary Force has arrived in southern France. See what the Germans have in store for us now. Ooh, this is this could be interesting if the Austrian navy is forced out of harbor. Maybe I could engage them and get some nice national morale perks. Okay, some reinforcing going on. Do those troops just deploy? By the way, German subs are testing our blockade line by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, they just deployed a whole bunch of troops near East Prussia, so my attempt to flank Tilsit will obviously failed. Germans are going to take Lutz. They destroyed the detachment there. Montenegrin Corps just got hit. There you go. The Austrians take Lutz, but we at least do some damage to the cavalry that moves in there. Shit. They broke our line on the Serbian border there. Our eastern flank is uncovered now. Surprisingly, our cavalry against those Germans in those mountains did pretty damn good. Can you build forts? Sort of. You can entrench your troops. The forts themselves I don't think can be built. The As you up your technology, I believe also the entrenchments become much more um, formidable. Oh, they took the bait. They moved that unit into the uh, salient I had set up. So here's the question. 
do we have another defensive line we can retreat to in Serbia? Or is Serbia done? Like, is that what just happened? Uh, we've got a slightly narrower front in the south there. Is that something maybe we need to consider this turn? Okay. The Marts Rebellion. Boers revolt against British rule in South Africa. King Carl I of Romania dies and Ferdinand I ascends the throne. Yeah. Um, thousands of foreign volunteers have come to France with a burning desire to enlist in our armed forces and serve the country. We could use a cadre of experienced legionnaires from Algeria to transform these enthusiastic idealists into a corps of hardened soldiers. Once their training is complete, this corps will deploy, deploy at Marseille in May of 1915. Sure. A new UK Corps, two Russian units arriving. Hey, we destroyed the enemy in Lut Lutz. We retook the city! Not really a tremendous achievement, but an achievement, I guess. We'll shift everybody south on these lines. All right, so we successfully destroyed another Austro-Hungarian unit in Lutz, another infantry unit there. Again, just trying to rack up as many casualties on these guys as I can, I guess. Uh, what about these troops here at Chernowitz? Are they, their supply is pretty poor. Oh, why did I do that? It was one to two before I moved them. All right. Another enemy unit destroyed. Reinforce that core and this core. Troops and Stanislaw reinforce. Not gonna have any more money to buy new troops or bring anyone forward. War is expensive. All right, we'll leave this cavalry unit here and entrench them. Hopefully the Germans run into more problems trying to attack through the mountains against them. You can try and advance south on Klausenberg. Or maybe Debrisen. This German unit, two to three, is... That's appealing. Got him! Shattered a German core. Okay, so we destroyed one German core on the Austro-Hungarian front. We can still see one, two, three, four, four more. Plus the invasion near Poland. Nice. Well, we can try and race in here and cut the troops off behind uh, whatever the name of the city is again. 
second core, I guess, will do that. So we've got three German cores, in theory, cut off. Although I'm assuming the port of Memel will provide them with supplies. Not 100% sure on that, though. In any event, we destroyed a German core. We'll see if they try and break out. If their supply does drop substantially, then we'll make a real effort to try and destroy them. But I suspect they will attack this core here, the second core, from three directions and they will break it. Maybe destroy it. Um, I can't even rail these guys, can I? I don't even have the money. Alright, well I guess that's all I can really do. I'm gonna f march these guys toward Warsaw, because that's where I think I'm in a little bit of trouble. With some reinforcements. Force march these guys south, or just march them south. So we can get this fresh core into, into action now. The Austro-Hungarian morale has fallen by 20%. Wow. They are, I mean, they are losing a lot of men. The Germans are still at 94%. The French are at 91. The British, 97 So if I fly these guys over here, and I recon their position, the attack still stays at 2 to 2 by the looks of it. I know it helps artillery. Let's actually pull these guys back slightly. That'll help supply for a little bit. Meanwhile, on the uh, Bulgarian front, or the, it's not Bulgarian, the Serbian front. Um, if we lose this city here, I think we lose the war. For the um, Montenegrins, that is. Nice! We shattered an Austrian core. And we advance into southern Montenegro, or into southern uh, Austria Hungary. Maybe that'll cause them to shift their attention a little bit. I almost feel... Well, the problem is with Albania in the war, there's no neutral flank, so I've just got a wide front the entire... The entire way... Do I have another Serbian unit deploying, maybe? Russian units, not Serbian. Can the Serbians afford any new units? They've got 98. Are we purchasing anything? I can't remember. Nope. A cavalry detachment or a detachment is all I can afford. I'm hoping that rather than pull back, what the AI usually does in this game is rather than retreat, if a unit really badly needs reinforcements, it holds it in place and reinforces, and if it does that, they'll have no way to attack south. But I'm banking an awful lot on the way the AI usually behaves. So 
push that detachment, the Gore's detachment, back. Shortens our front a little bit in the event that uh, that they don't counterattack and drive them right back. Then I then I can free up one more unit to move maybe north to shore up the right flank. Meanwhile, I th I'm hoping the Austrians pull one of their other units back here toward Mostar to uh, guard against my kind of breakout in that direction. Stein2883, thank you very much for the sub. 11 months now. And Epi82, thank you for the follow. All right. So... Meanwhile, the naval war. We've got at least one Austro-Hungarian cruiser. We should be able to beat up... God damn it, we drove it right back into port. Really wanted to destroy it. I wanted to destroy it so bad. Um, okay. So I probably should have used that French money for some other things. Meanwhile, the British, 102. Anti-submarine warfare seems like something we should get a head start on, so we will. Infantry weapons, also probably something here. Trench warfare is also something we should invest in. The French as well. Maybe fighter development too? I mean, I don't know what the AI is going to throw their money behind. We'll keep our money for there. Um. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that the attacks on this eighth Hungary uh, Austro-Hungarian Corps bought us a turn, where the enemy will just reinforce. But we'll see. All right, that's going to do it, I think, for this turn. I don't think we're missing anything. We did the Russian front. Nobody has enough money to do anything else. Everybody who can and should has already dug in. So... You know, one thing we could potentially do to lessen the likelihood of a breakout is attack this 8th core that is cut off. Well, again, I don't know if it's really cut off, but it's... At risk, I guess. So there you go. We took more ca... I mean, I didn't want to take those casualties, but we destroyed half this core. So it shouldn't be as useful in trying to attack west. Maybe we can reduce this pocket a little bit. Invade Denmark, Berlin by Christmas. Uh, the British don't have enough money to transfer these troops across the sea that I have. So I keep forgetting that. Actually, I didn't do the West Front at all, did I? Alright, these troops are exposed. I can get a 2-4 to four there. Defensive artillery. It's the first time we've seen artillery used in the game, by the way. Charge with the cavalry! Elon! Oh god, that was dumb. Wait. It said it was going to be 3-0 to zero against me, but my cavalry came through! Okay. Move those fresh troops in, and then flip those trenches around. Okay, so we just destroyed another German core. These boys need to pull back. Oh, I'll go one to three all day. 
Oh, shit. Undo that. Give me that one to three. That was a one to f It was zero to four. Hell yeah. Clicked off, um. That was a misclick. Just. Oh, come on. Can't finish off another core there. Got him. Alright. So we destroyed that enemy unit. I don't know if I want to retake Leal. That'll be exposing us to a salient, even though it's a national morale objective. Technically, you should want to hold it. But I don't. All right, let's pull this cavalry back, swing this infantry in, entrench these boys up to their eyeballs. These troops back, throw these troops into Sedan, entrench. All right. Okay. I spent my f French money apparently foolishly. And I'll bring these troops up. Because I don't know where my income went. I spent it on something. I think it was part of it, a big chunk of it was reinforcing a, a warship or something. I've got a whole bunch of cores here that are shot up behind the front that do need reinforcements. It's tempting to move into into Leal. But it would probably be unwise. Basically, we just ensure that we'd get killed. probably lose the marine detachment here as well as this Belgian detachment but hopefully they eat up enough attacks from the Germans also there's a good chance these guys may just reinforce they're at six health which isn't very good but a breakthrough seems unlikely on the northern front now, with that being said, uh, we need to move these guys into the distant blockade zone. Move this French vessel. So we're going to cut two more off on the blockade zone. I've been maybe focusing too much on the blockade. Perhaps German subs could become a threat. We know they are poking at the blockade line in the North Sea. They didn't do anything against it. I can't really do anything against these guys either with my current anti-submarine technology. So they may try to get on to our national morale objectives with their subs. We kind of have the southern ones blocked off for the most part. Um, the northern ones are a little bit more exposed if they take a real roundabout way, but they have to get back past the first blockade line, which they did. They have to get past most of the second blockade line because it's not really... They'd have to go way wide out toward, like, Iceland up here. And I don't think that's terribly... I mean, they could, but I don't think that's the most intuitive way to go about it. Um, so I think that's good. It's October of 1914. Uh... U.S. has money they can spend, but I can't use them for diplomacy. They're not making very much. I really want to put it behind economic development. Like, what else? Is there anything else that would make sense for the U.S. to spend their money on? So, infantry weapons, they don't have enough. Tank development, they do have enough. We could try and go tanks. 
fighter development, they could get a head start there. Heavy bombers, long range aircraft, advanced subs. Mobility, maybe. Anti submarine warfare would be nice. Spying, logistics, production technology, but really industrial technology is what I want. Because that's what gives you more money. And that will have the more immediate benefit for us because because of the way trade works, the allies get a percentage. So I don't think, but I'm not really making a whole lot of progress toward that either. So I don't know. You know, if you look at the graphs here, Germany has 64 land units. The next closest is Russia with 55, France with 26, the UK with 11. Italy has 7, but they're not in the war. Serbia has 10, but they're on the ropes. Austria-Hungary has 28, and the Ottomans have 9. If we take a look at the national morale, the Austro-Hungarians are dropping. They're at 79%. The Germans are staying pretty flat, pretty close to the top. The Russians are at 98, the Serbians at 81, the French at 91, and the British at 97. In terms of MPPs lost or gained, the British are gaining much more income than they are losing per turn. There were a few turns where they had a little bit higher, but generally speaking, this green line is, is above the red line, which is good. The French, on the other hand, have mostly been over, although not dramatically so. You can see this turn even just barely over their losses. The Serbians are, you know, off the charts. The Russians are also losing more than they're gaining. The Germans, on the other hand, are also are losing, and especially this turn, substantially more than they're gaining from their economy. They've always been kind of floating around the line. The Austro-Hungarians have been over the line the entire time, and this turn has been a disaster for them. Uh, plunder, not really much to speak. Well, not nothing so far for the Austro-Hungarians. The Germans definitely have some. They've spent a little bit of money on research and development. The Germans have spent a fair bit more. The British, eh, not enough. The French, not enough. No strategic bombing yet. Raiders, non really, not really existent. Okay. Well, that's that. We go to losses. The Germans have lost 12 units and the Austro-Hungarians 10. So 22 units so far lost for the Central Powers versus just three Russian units, two Serbian units, one French unit, and five British units, really? Well, I guess the British lost some of the garrison units. And Belgium counts as Britain, actually. So that's why. But 22 losses, that's, that's a lot. Germans have lost 10 cores, Austro-Hungarians 8, and then 2 cavalry cores each. So not been a pretty war so far. A lot of casualties on the Allied side, but they haven't lost units yet. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this turn. Um, the Western Front seems to have solidified. Uh, we did destroy that German core in Lille. That seems like a nice little area we can sort of jab them as a, as a salient. Meanwhile, the Eastern Front, we've sort of driven deep into the mountains in eastern Austria-Hungary and are uh, threatening to break out into the plain of Hungary, which could be devastating for Austro-Hungarian morale. With that being said, however, I am going to go ahead and wrap this one up. This is a little bit shorter than the first two episodes, but this is actually where the first live stream ended. So this is sort of a natural stopping point as we sort of wrap up our October 10th turn of 1914. In our next episode, we'll see as we move into the winter months how that affects our uh, campaign and our offensive. And we'll see if the Germans get more aggressive in the east or the west or, or how that all plays out. With that being said, hope you guys are enjoying the series, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.